What's up folks? My name is Georgie Grimm and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. Yes, we are in a different location today. I know, it's kind of confusing. I haven't been very consistent in where I've been filming recently just because of I've been so fucking busy that I can't even keep track of everything. So this video has been like delayed over and over and over and over again. And I can, you know, I'm sure that you can tell by the title exactly what this video is going to be about. And we'll jump into that in a real quick second. But just for the time being, I would like to mention... So if you see my eye and it looks like that, don't be alarmed. So basically what happened, quick mini story time before I get into this video. What really happened was that I was trying to go and like go into my brother's room and I wanted to like, you know, see what he was doing. And it was like at 9.30 at night and apparently he was like talking to his girlfriend. And basically what happened was that I was, you know, as I opened the door, I open it and, and it like fucking like so hands in my face and I'm on the ground and I'm crying, I'm crying, I'm crying. And like, I see blood on my hands. I'm like, oh my God, what the fuck is this? Like, did I literally just fucking die? I was literally, I am the most dramatic ass bitch you'll ever meet in your entire life. I swear to God, I literally thought I was fucking dying. I was like, oh my God, call the ambulance. I am dying right now. Holy fuck, what is happening? And so of course, you know, my parents are like trying to help me and I'm just like on the ground, I'm sobbing. I'm literally clutching my hands over my face so they can't even like see it. And the, my mom's like trying to pry my my arm off my face so she can just like get a fucking look because she's like okay are you dying you know what's going on you know and they see it and they're like oh my god it's like not that bad and they lay me down on the bed and they're like okay it's like breathe you know it's fine it's fine and like my dad sits with me and he's like okay, gotta take deep breaths deep breaths and i'm like okay okay and i'm like holding his hand and i'm like <sighs> It's like a lot of emotion. Oh my God. I might just make this a separate story time video, but fuck. I'm just like literally like killing time before I actually get into the real video. It's fine. I'm not nervous. It's fine. So that was an experience for me. I was overwhelmed to say the least. It was a fucking scrape. There was no need for stitches. I thought I was going to have to get stitches. I was panicking. I was like, oh my God, I have to go to the emergency room right now. My dad was like, you're going to have to go to the emergency room. I'm like, oh my God. It was giant. First off, the fucking goose egg was a massive and I'll insert some pictures in here oh, right now because those were extreme and I was like what the fuck is happening right now to say the least it was really really good learning experience still pretty tender here but didn't have to get stitches didn't have to go to the emergency room it was just a basic cut and scrape and bruise I had to ice my eye because duh so that's pretty much what happened now I have a pretty sweet fucking black eye because of it so hell yeah and not to mention a pop fucking blood vessel okay now that that story time is over time to get into the real one let's do it okay it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a fun cute time for Georgie. As you can all see, the video title is called My Coming Out Story. And that's pretty much what this video is gonna be. I am um, I suck at fucking introing these videos and it's not gonna be serious. I can't do a serious video. I literally can't because I'm not a serious person at all. So don't expect a fucking serious video. Fun story time. Let's start from the very beginning. Let's bring it back to high school. It is what like junior year of my high school career. I am a junior in high school and I'm kind of like, you know, I'm a late bloomer, right? Like I didn't really like, I dated some guys and I was like, that was kind of cool. I didn't really like it that much. So I was like, whatever. So there's this show called Doctor Who. And um, I was like, oh, this is a cool show. And I really liked it. And there was this character and her name was Clara Oswald. And I was like, oh shit, she's kind of cool. Oh my God, she's kind of cool. I was like, whoa, what is this feeling? What is this feeling that I am feeling right now? I don't understand this. And I was like confused. I was like, oh my God, oh my God. Like, do I like girls? Do I like girls? Do I like guys? I don't know. And so I was like, I think I might be bisexual. And so I was like, okay. I casually like kind of came out to my mom when I was like in high school and she was like, okay, we're gonna talk about this later. And then I quickly was like, never mind, I'm not actually bi. And I like dated in the closet for another like, I don't know, two years after that. And so that happened. And then I dated a guy my senior year all the way through my college freshman year. I dated this guy all the way from like mid March all the way through beginning of September. September 1st, I know that for a fact. I know that is the exact date that we broke up on. We broke up on September 1st, 2016. And I dated him for about a year and a half. I was a really fucking horrible relationship as a whole. I fucking hated him. He was a dick. He abused me mentally, emotionally, and physically. That was not a good relationship. I will definitely bring that story back later on. And I'm not doing this story time, but I'll save that story for a later date. We will talk about that much later. But he was the reason for a lot of my PTSD, my anxiety, my depression, and basically my overall poor mental health. So that was a really fun time for me. I really fucking love that. 
that was horrible. I honestly was like in such a horrible spot in my life. I didn't even know what to do, what, you know, where to turn. I was so miserable and I was so fucking depressed. I didn't know who I was, what I wanted to do, where I wanted to go in life and what I was doing at all in general. And so of course, you know, I just kind of did. I didn't turn to drugs. I didn't turn to alcohol because at the time I was really scared of all that. I hadn't really tried that. That wasn't really like my vibe, you know? Although there was this one point, okay, I'm getting really sidetracked right now, but it's fine. It totally ties into everything else. So don't worry about it. There was this one time, it was a really, really bad night. And my ex-boyfriend at the time, that sounds so weird to say now. I know it's so kind of, it's fucking crazy. It's wild, it's wild, it's whatever. <laughs> at the time he like was having like this really shitty night or whatever. And I do this because it actually wasn't fucking shitty because I will tell you the story. I promise you guys, I will tell the story to you much later. Um, and I'm sure that it'll be titled my ex-boyfriend was a sociopath because he actually legitimately was a fucking sociopath. And we will get into that later, I promise. Anyways, so basically I'm just really trying to make this fun for me to edit because I know that if I edit it and I'm happy and I'm enjoying this, then I won't be miserable editing it. And I will be very excited about it going up rather than really like fucking scared. You know what I mean? Like, cause you know, doing this is really scary for me. So it's fun. I love it so much. Oh my God. We're seeing a lot of emotions from Georgie right now. And this is just like the full fucking spectrum. Okay, fuck. Next. So I date him. Things are shitty from the get go. It literally like, there's like, okay, I swear to God, I cannot think of a single moment in that entire relationship where I could, you know, possibly catch a break from his stupid fucking lying, his emotional bullshit, his fucking quote unquote depression spells, his quote unquote suicidal spells, his quote unquote bullshit, 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 bullshit. Like, it was constant fucking bullshit after bullshit after bullshit. I could not seem to catch a fucking break. And it was, oh my God, there's a lot there. That's why I need that to be a separate video. There was this one night when my ex-boyfriend, let's call him Bob, that's a weird name. Let's call him Jimmy, Jimmy works. Okay, great. Where Jimmy texted me and he was like, oh my God, I'm, I'm so depressed right now. I'm having anxiety. I'm having depression. Like I want to kill myself all this and I'm like fuck I don't know what to do. Like I literally was like oh my god like, I don't know what the fuck to do. I'm I'm literally in Ellensburg. He's in Seattle. We are two hours away from each other I can't do fucking shit and I'm like I'm having like a grand mall panic attack That's what I call my big 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 panic attacks where I was like <sighs> that shit was not fun. I have not experienced that in a very, very long time and I'm very grateful for that. But that was the worst, I think one of the worst anxiety attacks I ever experienced in my entire fucking life as a whole. And I've experienced a lot of anxiety and I've dealt with a lot of anxiety in my life. That was a bad one. It was a really, really bad one. I almost like fucking like, I don't even know. It was so bad. So I call my dad because my dad is like literally like one of my best friends. Like he is like my ride or die. Like, I mean, I say that about Tony. Tony absolutely 100% is my ride or die. But my dad, I, because I didn't know Tony at the time. My dad at the time was my ride or die. You know, I fucking like, I told him about everything. I was like, dad, I don't know what to do. Like, I literally have no idea to, what to do. And he was like, I don't know. I'm so sorry. You can call the police. And I was like, I don't know. I'm in Ellensburg. He's in fucking Seattle. Like, I don't know what that would mean. And so it was a whole thing. And then he always did this. Jimmy, not my dad, but Jimmy fucking like 10 minutes later, it felt like an hour. 10 minutes later, he was like, just kidding. Shit like that happened all the fucking time. And that was one of the worst fucking things I've ever experienced. <sighs> And that was the last time I ever dated a guy. And I just remember like after going through all that bullshit, I was like, I just want to fucking drink. I just want to fucking drink. And I like, I went across the hall because our hallways and the dorms that I stayed in were like really tight and really close together. So like my dorm friend like literally lived right across the hallway from me. And so I was like, dude, I need a drink. Like I need a fucking drink. I need something. And he was like, I'm so sorry. I don't have anything right now, which was super rare because he definitely always had stuff on him. So it was really rare that he didn't have anything on him. I was like, fuck, okay, fine. Which was honestly a blessing in disguise. I, I really am grateful that I didn't have that option, you know, even though I really wanted that option at the time. That was a really bad time. And I'm like kind of remembering that now. And it's just like, wow. And I'm remembering it all in full detail because it's really, it was an experience that I have not forgotten. And I don't think I ever will just because it was so traumatic and it was so, oh my God, it was just, it was everything. And oh fuck, I don't even know. I can't even begin to like tell you how fucking horrible it was. But anyways, fast forward to after I've broken up with, Jimmy, all that bullshit is over with. It's gone, it's done with, you know, it's all left in the past. Fast forward to my winter quarter of my sophomore year. That's when I meet Tony and we hit it off. Like immediately we are best friends, literally from the get go, we are best friends. And we start talking about moving to LA. We start talking about YouTube, Hollywood, all this stuff. You know, of course we're still in the beginning phases of all of our, you know, stuff that we're doing. We haven't really like, we haven't started our journey yet in terms of like growth and like where we really wanna go. So it's just pretty much like the beginning
beginning phases of like what we're doing right now, which was honestly crazy to fucking think about that that's what we were doing. Last year, we start pretty much hanging out every single day. I hang out with him like 24 seven and I'm like, okay, this dude's awesome. I fucking love him. He doesn't want to fuck me. I love that about him. I love that we can just be friends. I love that there's no pressure with that. Cause I really like being friends with guys, but I always had that pressure or that anxiety that I had to have sex with them. And I was like, fuck, I really hate doing that. You know, at that point I'd only slept with two guys in my life and I've only ever slept, I think with two guys in my life. One of them was in high school. He was my high school boyfriend. And then the other one was Jimmy. Tony's gay. Y'all know that. It was really cool to have a friendship with a guy where it wasn't like, like romantic. You know what I mean? There wasn't that expectation and we could just be each other and be around each other and just be with each other and not have that pressure of like, you know, there needs to be sex or something like that. You know, our friendship flourished. It's, you know, it's grown literally so much over the past couple of years that we've known each other. And he's seen me grow from like being this like scared, like thinking she was bisexual into who I am now today. So it went from, I met Tony, we became friends, winter quarter of my sophomore year, his junior year. That was awesome. Then we moved in together my junior year and his senior year. And we lived together all throughout that entire year. I still thought I was bisexual. I wasn't dating really anybody at the time. I'd only really been like interested in women specifically. Just saying. Never really showed much interest towards men after that. I really was like not wanting to be with another man. Um, I tried like, oh my God, this fucking story on my birthday. Holy shit. Okay, so story time, mini story time again. On my birthday of my sophomore year, which was like the first year I lived in um, these like the fucking dorms you've seen me in, filming my videos in from this past year are all like in the exact same building that I've lived in for the past pretty much now four years. And I'm going to Central. So that's a fun time. Um, and I, this fucking story on my birthday. <laughs> oh my god. So my birthday, my birthday, my birthday. Great, right? Okay. So it's my birthday and I am turning 19. And 19, I will always, always, always claim that it was the worst fucking birthday I ever had. It was fucking awful. I mean, honestly, it was just, it was really, it was not a good time for me emotionally, mentally, even physically. Like I was just, I was not in a good space in my life, in my emotions, in everything that I was going through. Basically, it's my 19th birthday. We're sitting in my friend's same guy who lived across from me in the dorm my freshman year. Let's give him the name David because I'm looking at David Bowie right now and I'm like, great, right, awesome, let's do that. Great name. So David invites me over to his dorm. You know, he and a couple of his friends are just hanging out, you know, and drinking. And I'm like, great, you know, we, this can be my birthday. It's not really what I wanted to do, but I'll fucking do it anyways. <sighs> so much growing up to do. Fuck. This is so weird to think about. Anyway, so we're, you know, we're hanging out in his dorm. We're drinking. We're having a good time. You know, we get pretty drunk. It's pretty good. I'm like, great. This is awesome. And then we start dancing and shit gets more intimate. I'm like, oh, this is kind of getting awkward. I don't really like where this is going. I don't really like where I'm like, this is kind of weird. I don't feel very comfortable with this. So I'm like, okay, but I'll still go with it. Cause I think that I, you know, I'm still under the impression that this is what I have to do. I have to be this way. I have to be with men. I have to be, you know, kissing men, even though I don't want to be kissing men. And even at the time, it was so funny because I was so under the impression that I was, you know, still bi. That I thought that I had to like men. That I thought that I literally liked men. And, you know, I thought that the anxiety that I felt inside of my heart every time, you know, a man kissed me or a man, like, he tried to make moves on me was, like, because he wasn't the right man. But it turns out that that happened with every single guy I'd ever been with. And I've been with you know a couple of guys so it wasn't like I was you know not with the right guy or anything it was just because I just wasn't with the right person aka not a woman <laughs> and so of course things heat up a little bit you know it's gonna whatever and like we're making dinner downstairs I, I think I asked have you ever felt this way about another person um, and then he like drunkenly says like no only one other person. And then I'm like, oh, that's such a fucking line. Like in the back of my head, like I could tell. Cause I was like, I'm smart. Like I'm intuitive. I can pick shit up. I knew that was such a fucking line. And I was just like, okay, great. This is just, you know, one night stand. This is some bullshit. I don't care. And so we go up to his room and we're like, you know, and shit's getting hot. And I'm like, okay, things are happening. And I'm like, great. And then I'm like, do you have a condom? And then, cause I'm, I'm drunk, you know? I was so upset. I was so miserable. 
I was so angry. I didn't know what I fucking wanted. I was like, this is like the worst time I've in my life. And I was just like, I guess, you know, I want to have sex with a guy. And so um, he like pulls out the condom. He's like, yes, I have one right here. And I'm like, great, awesome. And then, you know, we keep kissing. We keep, you know, getting hot and heavy or whatever. And then I'm like, okay, stop. And then he stops because he's a good guy. Fortunately, fuck. <sighs> I don't know what would have happened if he wasn't. Oh my God, I'm so grateful. Thank you so much. Like if you know who you are and you're watching this video, thank you for not, you know, taking advantage of me when I was in that state. That definitely could have happened, but you didn't because you're a good person. And I'm really grateful. Move forward. And then we have all that happened. Sophomore year was kind of crazy. A lot's happened. I learned a lot about myself. Tony helped me reach a lot of like new insights about myself that I never realized that I had. He helped me realize that I was psychic, that I was, you know, probably way more capable of more shit than I ever expected myself to ever be. So thank you so much, Tony. You're literally like, I literally don't know what I'd fucking do without you. You know that you're like my homie. So like, you know, you know how it is. You know how we are. Fast forward to my junior year. Tony and I are living together. It's pretty fun. It's pretty cool. It's pretty chill. I, you know, go throughout the majority of that year without like really dating anybody. I'm not really into the dating scene that much. I'm not, I've never really been into the dating scene, like in general. I've always been very very like solo, you know, I've been very like okay with being single. I've always been very like okay with not being with somebody. And so, you know, being in a relationship was never really something I was like always in, you know, I was always kind of like single, you know, like I said, I go throughout the majority of that year without really dating anybody. And then I get to the end of my junior year. It's my fucking spring quarter of my junior year. And I'm really like seriously thinking about wanting to go on a date with a girl because I've been like really, I've never been on a date with a girl. I've never been with a girl at that point. I know I'm a junior in college. I have not been with a girl yet. I was like, well, I fucking need to fix that. So I, you know, hit this girl and I'm like, hey, I think you're really cute because we've kissed before at parties and like I thought that she actually was really fucking cute. So I'm sitting in class, right? And I'm like, I'm, like really nervous, you know? And I'm like thinking about this. I'm, I keep thinking about it. It keeps playing in my head. I'm like, fuck, fuck. I really want to ask her out. I really want to ask her out because I think she's really fucking cute. And I'm like, oh my God. Okay, come on, Georgie. Just fucking do it. And so I pull up Snapchat because that's the only form of communication that I have of her on my phone. And I'm like, hey, I think you're really cute. We should hang out sometime. And I said that to her and I'm like super fucking nervous. And I'm like, okay. Please, 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 please say yes. Please say yes. And I get a back response and it's exactly what I wanted it to be. And I'm like, oh my God. And she's like, hey, I think you're really cute too. And I think we should definitely hang out. I was like, I was like, oh my God. Did I just flirt with a girl for the first time? Oh my god. And I was like, whoa. So is this what it really feels like to be like with somebody who you actually fucking like and want to be with and don't feel anxiety when you're around that person? Oh my god. What is this feeling? I don't know what it is. It's so new. And I was just like so overwhelmed with the feeling. And I was like, whoa, okay, this is new. This is fun. I like this a lot. And then I think later on in the evening, we go on a date. It's really cute. We go up to the hill where Tony and I like have had a lot of like psychic deep shit happen to us in Ellensburg. We go on a date to the water tower up there. It's really cute and we're walking, we're holding hands. It's really cute. I'm really happy about it. Oh my God, it was so fucking cute. I literally, ah, I'm like thinking about it right now. I'm just like, oh my God, that was so fucking cute. And then she like, we get to the top of the hill and she fucking kisses me. And I'm like, oh shit, bitch, what the fuck? And that was like the coolest fucking experience. I, I'm like emotionally living through it again. And I'm just like remembering it. I'm like, wow, that was such a good experience. And I'm like so happy in that moment. I'm just like, wow, this is what it's actually about. This is what the fuck it fucking is about. I was just like, no shit, no shit, you know? And I mean, still, even still at that fucking point, I thought that I was still bisexual. And it was a lot of the reasons why is because I think it was because she was also bisexual. So <laughs> we get to the top of the hill, we can it's really cute. I'm really happy. Okay, we stopped making out and it's just like, it's really cute. And like, I was wearing this dress and she really liked the dress. It's really cute. It's so fucking cute. Oh my God. I'm literally like still thinking about it. I'm just like, wow, fuck. Like I'm definitely over her. But like that moment was just like so good. She was so fucking hot too. Oh my God. I literally like, let me just go on a full ass rant about my first like girlfriend pretty much. Cause like we didn't put a label on it, but we were definitely a summer fling. We had a summer fling. We were like, shit was happening. You know what I mean? Like shit was fucking happening. And like, it was good. It was really fucking good. That was the summer between my junior and senior year of college in which we were like summer flings with each other. Cause we like, you know, we pretty much just like made out all the time. And like, it was really cute. And like, you know, stuff happened. And it was like kind of steamy. You know what I mean? Like, it was very hot, oh my god. And then we get to 
the end of summer and like she's not really talking to me and I'm like okay what the fuck's going on and I'm also like on a bunch of dating apps too at the same time except I wasn't really with like when I was dating her we were in an open relationship so I was like definitely like talking to different girls and I was like oh my god you're super cute oh my god like whatever 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 it's fun summer fling happens end of summer happens uh we are no longer a thing you know things have moved on some shit happens and then you know we go on and we I go back to school and I like start going on these dating apps and I'm like okay this is really fun like I really want to fucking like do this because it's like okay um and to be truthfully honest the only reason why I started doing them was because Tony started doing them and I was like oh my big brother's doing them so I might as well do them too oh you know what I mean <laughs> I hate myself for that. Um, but I was like, Big Brother's doing it, so I have to do it too. God, that was such a fucking, oh my god. That is totally exactly what happened. So, you know, and I start like, I get on these dating apps. And keep in mind, I still think I'm fucking bisexual because I'm stupid. <laughs> I'm stupid, just, you know, plain and flat out. Or I'm just in serious, serious denial also. I'm in some serious denial as well. So I'm like on these fucking dating apps. I'm like hitting up all these girls. I'm like, fuck, you're so cute. Fuck, you're so fine. Oh my God. I want to fucking, you know, fuck your titties. I want to fuck your pussy. And I'm like, mm, mm, mm. Yes. And so... <laughs> Sorry, I'm probably gonna cut all of that out or I'm not and it's gonna be a kind of a lot for everyone watching this video But it's fine because it's me. So I don't give a shit. So yeah, it's a fun time on all these dating apps <sighs> She was hard for me to get over TBH. Like the girl who I was talking about in my summer fling, she was very difficult for me to get over. Like she was probably one of the hardest girls, hardest people in general for me to ever get over because oh my God, I had, s <sighs> she was like, she was deep rooted in me. She was pretty deep rooted. I was like, she had her talents in me. And I was like, fuck. You know what I mean? I can only think of one more girl who has done that to me and I'm not even gonna get into that one because that one is messy as Fuck. I mean, it's still happening. Even now. <laughs> like, am I just like the worst or something? Like, fuck. I don't even know. Can't keep it in my pants, I guess. Shit. I'm a whore. It's fine. Anyways. And Tony thinks he's the sluttier one of us. Oh, please, honey. Have you met me? Are you kidding? Oh my god. I'm like, hello, no. Anyways, so we get to September and this is right before everything happens. So this is September of my senior year of college, which is like this past year, which is so wild to think about because that's literally like a year ago today, fuck, you know? And I'm, I'm having a good time on these dating apps, hitting up all these cute girls. Cause like for a hot second, I had hit up a couple of guys and I just like, I was not feeling it. Like from the get go, like I even like met this really sweet and cool guy who was like really nice, you know, he's really cool. And I was like, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe. And then it just didn't feel right. It just fucking did not feel right. I was like, I can't do this. And like I ghosted him because I was like, I can't fucking talk to you anymore. Cause it just, I had no feelings for him whatsoever. I was like, I don't care about what you're doing with your life. I don't care about who you are as a person. I just did not have any feelings for him whatsoever. And I was like thinking about it. I was like looking at all the guys on Tinder and I was like fuck all of this And so I turned off guys and I just strictly said it to girls Of course, you know, you're, you're thinking like maybe you know, she's gonna fucking get it. No, I didn't I did not get it at that point I was like, oh, uh, you know, I'm still bisexual. I just want to try it with just women You know, I was like this is what I, I said. I think I was like I know I'm bisexual <laughs> I laugh at myself now. Oh my God. Uh, but you know, I'm gonna fucking, I'm just gonna fucking like be with women and only women because I only like women. And I'm still thinking, how the fuck did I not get it? How the fuck did I not get it? Like I'm looking at myself back then and I'm like, how did you not fucking understand? How did you not understand? What the fuck? Oh my God. <laughs> You're gay, you dumb bitch. Anyways, so. We get to college, we're having a good time. We're, you know, still on Tinder, still talking to all these girls. And then finally, it's like mid-October. I hit up this girl. She's really nice. She's really sweet. She lives in Yakima. We don't ever meet. Her name's gonna be Sally. So that's easy for me to remember. So I'm talking to Sally for a while and fucking hate that name. Fuck that. Her name's gonna be Emily. So I'm talking to, you know, Emily on Tinder and we talk for about like, what? I wanna say like a full month. Like we're really like getting to know each other. You know, things are really hitting off. And I'm like, this is really cool. And I'm like having these amazing deep fucking conversations with her like so deep shit that I've never talked about with anybody else besides Tony you know stuff that's like so fucking deep that I could never like oh my god it's like bearing my soul to her oh my god 
<laughs> that kind of hurt actually, fuck. <laughs> fuck, okay. And I'm sitting there and I remember this day very clearly. And I wanna say it was either October 14th or was the 15th, but I wanna say it was the 14th because I think it was on my sister's birthday. Keep in mind, it was on my sister's birthday, but also keep in mind, it was still in the month of Libra. It was still Libra season. Keep in mind, I'm also a Libra. So keep in mind, I figured this out in my season. Let's all just be really proud of Jordy for that because dude, good shit, good shit. Anyways, so talking to this girl and I'm like, shit, shit, shit. I think I'm gay. Cause I was like, fuck. I've never felt this in way ever, literally ever in all my time that I've talked to any guy at all ever in my entire experience of ever, forever, and always have I ever felt this close to another human being. And keep in mind, I'd never even met her. I don't even know who the fuck she is really. And I was like, holy fucking shit. I've never felt this way about a man ever. And then that when everything started making sense. Cause I can remember seriously, like very clearly sitting up in my bed and being like, holy fucking shit, I think I'm gay. And then that's kind of when everything started. And ever since I've been living my life out and I'm fucking gay. I'm gay and I'm so goddamn proud of myself. I'm fucking gay and I love myself for that. And that is my coming out story. I hope you guys really enjoyed that. That was a really personal story of mine. It took honestly a lot of fucking courage to tell that story. And I really hope that this story inspires other people and helps other people tell their story. I'll catch you guys next week. Hey, thanks, bye.